Hi, and welcome to this Father's Day free-for-all Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Thinking uh, over the last hour doing finishing up show prep for today, we're going to take phone calls on one topic today and one topic only. I want you to call in here and talk about some positive memory you have of your father. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about what we do in church. You know, this happens every time you go to church service on Mother's Day, and what happens? I mean, every mother in the room gets flowers, and they have an award for the woman that's been the mother the longest time, and they have an award for the woman that's been the mother the shortest time, and they have an award for the woman that has the most kids and the woman that's traveled the furthest to be there for worship. And we praise mothers, and we extol mothers, and well, we should. But what happens when we get to Father's Day? Man, the preacher walks out with the biggest baseball bat he can find and starts beating dads about the head and shoulders. Uh, so, you know, I mean, a typical dad, last place he'd want to be on Father's Day is in a church service where he's going to get tongue-lashed for being such a miserable failure. So what we want to do today is we want to give you an opportunity to talk about your dad. So that's all we're, that's the only phone calls we're going to take today is a positive memory of your dad. You don't have to call in and say your dad was the greatest dad in the world. Your dad might have had a lot of flaws, but there were, were one or two things that really stand out in your mind about him, the kind of character he had, maybe the kind of example that he set for you, maybe something that he did for you, maybe something that you did with him that's a treasured memory for you about your time with your father. So that's what we're going to do. That's the only topic on phone calls today is a positive memory that you have of your father. So we're going to get to all of that as the program develops. Now, in the uh, scriptures, there's a tiny little book that not a lot of people even read. It's the book of Philemon. It's found at the tail end of the letters of Paul that were written to individuals right after 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy and Titus. And then we have the little epistle to uh, Philemon. Philemon was a guy. Now, at that time, slavery was legal in the Roman Empire. Now, the kind of slavery that they had in the Roman Empire was much more in the nature of what we would have called indentured servitude back in the day. A lot of these slaves eventually would be able to buy their own freedom. They would be manumitted or freed by their own masters and set up in some kind of business, and then the the former slave owner would be like a major investor in that business. He would share in the profits, and he would set up the slave who was responsible, hardworking, industrious, and all that in his in his own occupation. But they were slaves. They were the property of their masters. Now, Philemon owned this slave by the name of Onesimus, whose name means useful in Latin, which might mean he was a good slave. He was useful to his master. He'd run away. For whatever reason, he'd run away from Philemon, and he'd found Paul. He'd run into Paul. He'd come to Rome where Paul was a prisoner, and that's where Onesimus had hooked up with Paul. Now, Paul knew Philemon, and maybe that's where Onesimus knew about Paul was through Paul's connection with Philemon. So the slave Onesimus is with Paul in Rome, and Paul is writing to Philemon to figure out what to do about this. Now, one of the things that is very clear here is that, you know, Paul, the, the upshot of this deal is Paul appeals to Philemon to receive him back as a brother, not as a slave, but as a brother. He says, I want you to have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I will repay it to say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. I just love Paul had to write that with a twink. I mean, you talk about shaming Philemon into doing the right thing here, guilting him into do it. Uh, you know, Philemon. Hey, you know, I'd like you to. In, I'd like you to receive this guy back. Just, just welcome him. Don't punish him when he comes home. Uh, I'm just asking you to uh, kind of do a favor for this guy. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, I don't even want to mention the fact 
that you owe to me your very life. The reason you're alive is because of me, but I don't want to mention that because that could make you feel guilty and you'd want to do it on that account. So I think he had a twinkle in his eye when he wrote that. But here is the point that I want to make. Paul says in this letter to Philemon, I am sending him back to you. I am sending him back to you. Now you think about this when it comes to this immigration debate. You know, uh, a, a lot of the argument now on the part of evangelicals is, hey, we know illegal aliens. We know people that have broken the law. They're in our neighborhoods. They're in our schools. They're in our churches. They are sitting next to us in our church services in the pew. And they're really nice people. And we've gotten to know them. We've gotten to love them. We cannot possibly send these people back. We cannot expect them to obey the law. We can't expect them to subject themselves to the penalty of the law. They're too nice for that. We've got to be more compassionate than that. And that's what I want you to see here. Paul had no hesitation. If a, if a guy had broken the law and was in a place where he had no legal right to be, what did Paul do? He sent him back. It was his Christian responsibility. It was his Christian duty. So in Christianity... We do not enable a man to flee his past. We face him and we ask him to face it. We face him toward his past, ask him to deal with it, make restitution where necessary, make things that are right. Uh, we don't accommodate the breaking of the law. We do everything in our power to make things right. And there's a lot of love and there's a lot of compassion here in this. You know, Paul had to know this was tough for Onesimus to go back. It was risky for him because slaves had the, I mean, slave owners had the power of life and death over their slaves. But nevertheless, that is what the apostle did with Philemon. Powerful, powerful lesson for that in the illegal immigration issue. Well, let's go to prayer. Lord Jesus, in your name, I pray for myself. I pray for my wife and my children. I pray for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk. I pray for President Obama and all of our elected officials. I pray for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I pray that you will grant us the gift of faith and that you will strengthen the faith that we have in you and that you will increase our love for all the saints. I pray that we will be active in sharing our faith with others. I pray that the fellowship of our faith will become effective, active, and powerful so that we may have a full understanding of every good thing we have in you. I pray that our love will give others great joy and encouragement and that we will refresh the hearts of the saints. Work in us so that the things we ought to do, we will do willingly on the basis of love. May the favors we do for others be spontaneous and not forced. You said in words that came from your own mouth that peacemakers are blessed because they will be called sons of God. Please use us as you use Paul to bring together separated brothers, helping those who are in the wrong make things right and appealing to offended brothers to forgive. I pray for any strained relationships in our own lives. May we welcome others who wish to be reconciled to us. Grant us the spirit of forgiveness and may the example of reconciliation we show be a benefit to others and refresh their heart in you. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen.